Look here, they're saying knock, step back, six feet, wait, welcome out. Oh, <laughs> we will come out. Six feet, here we go. Two, four, six, right. How are you, ma'am? I'm good, how are you? Good, good, good. We need to keep our six feet going here. At the, the, so, uh, um, exactly. we're dirty cowboys. <laughs> Tell me quickly something about your business. What, what? When did you start and what do you make and, and what are you up to? Uh, we've been around for a good five to six years um, in this location for about four years. What we started off with was our white whiskey, an unoaked whiskey, uh, unoaked rye. I want to quickly ask you, instead of making this too long, is yeah. COVID-19, lockdown, all these changes now suddenly. How do you think that's going to impact your business going forward? Are you planning to adapt some things or are you just going to keep on making good booze? people going to come back for it well life is adapting right like if you don't adapt to change then you're in big trouble so this is just a reminder that we've got to keep going and striving and and changing as we need to adapt as you need to organization is the best way to go so what we're trying to do is to get people to email us so you go to our website you do contact page it's truenorthdistilleries.com and you go on there, you send us an email, we get you on the list. That's what we're trying to do right now. So people are coming out for nothing and, uh, and being turned away, because that's the worst. And you can still get scotch, you can still get your bourbon. So it's all good there. <laughs> we don't do bourbon, but we're, we're, we've got our scotch, we've got our Irish whiskey, we've got, you know, we're... Oh, it's all the good stuff. You betcha. You do all the good stuff. We've got gin. You guys are the Kettle Valley Food Co-op. That's right, the Kettle Valley Food Co-op. The co-op was uh, was founded on the idea that we can feed our local population from what's grown here. We're lucky enough to have a climate that we can be growing enough food and preserving enough food um, that we can, you know, be able to feed everybody that lives here. The beauty of the co-op is that we're we're all online, and that was um, that started becoming a little bit more important these days with the situation that we're facing. But uh, the order is open from Thursday at 7 p.m. until Monday at midnight, so all of uh, all of the members can log on. Uh, they they. They scroll through all the products, they place their orders, confirm their orders, and then on uh, the following Thursday, the producers all bring their bring uh, what was ordered to our one kind of distribution center, and from there, customers either come in and pick it up, or we um, or we can deliver. We're offering free delivery now, so in light of the, the current situation. So yeah, we've been, uh, our, it's almost entirely volunteer run. We're from Christina Lake to Greenwood pretty much is where we're able to deliver right now. And hopefully as we as we move forward, we can we can take it further and feed the entire Kettle Valley. The Boardroom Cafe, what's the business about? We're a board game cafe and restaurant, I guess you could say. Oh, so the idea is you can come and you can play board games. You, you yeah. do poker as well and card games and things? And no... uh, not really poker. <laughs> That's at home. <laughs> <laughs> this must really have affected you because people are not allowed inside your store any longer, is it? That's right. So now we've moved to sort of everybody buying games and taking them home to play with their families. That's a good idea because now you get to spend time with the family, obviously, and this lockdown has got some benefits. Yeah. Well, some benefits. How are things changing, you think, going forward for, for, for businesses in Grand Forks? I think it's been a really hard time for the businesses in Grand Forks, but I think it's also we're proving our resiliency because we, you know, a bunch of us bounced back after the flood and we're taking, we have to take it as an opportunity to revamp and be better and be stronger and do things better. So we're adapting by, we're doing takeout, um, delivery, uh, we actually are in the process of, of moving our whole inventory online so that people can order from home to have it delivered um, and then we're actually going to take that across the country. We're going to be able to ship our games across the country so I think that's kind of cool. It is kind of cool. And this is the interesting thing about entrepreneurs is they actually take adversity and they turn it into something new. Yeah. The distillery is making hand sanitizer. You're going to So are you designing games as well as it or is it uh, That's a dream. That's a dream in in process. <laughs> you are a campground owner. Yes. Pete. Help me out with the implications of this whole lockdown shutdown thing for you guys. Have, have is uh, your business obviously shut down, is it? Yes, and it's confusing because on the one hand we have um, the government telling us that we have to be um, not allowing people in and then there's another part of uh, part of it saying that we have to let people in because they have no place to stay. So we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. If I let somebody in because they just want to get away and go camping and stay in their RV, uh, I'm, un I'm under the impression that I'll get in trouble for that. So they say no camping because it's a tent. And I think they think that COVID-19 can come through the tent, but it, it can't come through the RV. I don't know. 
Do I have a quarantine section in my park? Yes. You have the summer coming up. Are, are you filling up with uh, reservations? Are you taking reservations? Are you, are you positive? Is it going to be all peachy and good to go? <laughs> um, I am got my fingers crossed that we will have a busy summer and that this will all blow over and we will have a great summer. Um, but right now we're holding our breath. Fingers crossed with you. Yeah. Yeah, fingers crossed with you that this is going to turn out to be one of the better summers because people are getting over it and need to get outside, yeah. isn't it? So it is pretty busy up and down here. For sure. And you got some really cool bikes here in the back. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't, uh, you can't miss them, but things are, are a little shut down for you at the moment, isn't it, Josh? Yeah, we're like, we're down to three days a week right now, just trying to limit the traffic through the shop, uh, considering all factors. A quick question for you around this impact of the whole COVID-19 and the lockdown and so forth. This area's whole business is tourism. How are you guys planning the rest of the year? Well, right now it's just day by day, but as the summer goes on, we're hoping to do limited interactions with the public. So if you're looking to do rental equipment and that type of thing, we'll clean it thoroughly in between our customers and we'll do deliveries to your door instead of having folks come to the shop. So if you're still intending to come out, we'd definitely love to see you and we'd love to help you out in any way that we can. So the bottom line is um, you finding some new ways to yep. do your business. Christina Lake is a little jewel that people don't really know about. If you have to give people advice to say, come to Christina Lake, what is the single most important thing you need to do when you come to Christina Lake? What is that? Get out on the trails and be on the water. So get a kayak, rent a boat, or get on your own two feet, go on a horseback ride, ride a bike, explore what's right out the front door in Christina Lake. It's a, a mecca of adventure that's really not known. And like you said, it's a jewel that really needs to be explored. So a lot of riding going on here. A lot, quite a riding, quite a bit of riding. That's for darn sure. So one of the cool things here in Grand Forks is you can come and get fresh milk here at Jersey Land, and it's on tap, and you can actually taste what real farm milk tastes like. Let me show you how we do it. You need some good Jersey milk that's here from Jersey Land Organics. I you? sure do. I brought my bottles so I can fill some up from their outside dispenser, which is great. Isn't that cool? That's yeah. something so unique I, about Grand Folks people don't even know about. No, I totally love it. We've been using it, but now we come back. Not only is the milk fantastic, but uh, you don't you don't have to get close to anybody. It's all sanitized. It's uh, and yeah, fill up your own bottles. No plastic. No, everything's awesome. Yeah, and it tastes better. That's that's it's a, way better. That's yeah. the way better thing. No, right. help me out. What is your job in this whole, this, this, this area? What, what do you do? So I'm the elected official for rural Grand Forks. So about 3,200 constituents and all the areas around Grand Forks. The mayor and myself, we've been doing a ton of work together, uh, trying to help communicate uh, out to the, the region and the community to figure out what gaps are and, and how to fill them. Right now, we put a lot of focus uh, recently on those gaps, particularly around business supports. And we've seen really great proactive energy from both the chamber and community futures around trying to figure out what those are, helping us uh, then speak with our MP, Richard Cannings and MLA Linda Larson about how to how to deal with those and we're seeing some changes I mean recognizing that it's not just us right there there's similar issues around small businesses but we're getting better support for those small businesses that really support our community especially in rural Grand Forks. I want to talk about when all of this is over when this whole fiasco is passed what makes this such a great area why, why Grand Forks why, why should people come here? Well, it's, it's a good question. You know, I, I, I love it. I think a lot of us love it. Uh, it. There's an interesting kind of connection to what's going on now with, with what happened a couple of years ago with the, the floods and, and our recovery from that. And, you know, the boundary gets forgotten a lot. And, and although a lot of us complain about that, I think a lot of us love it as well. And, and so there's some wonderful to me about the resilience that you see in, in our small businesses. There's a real kind of innate sense of, I think, resilience, but also just like, well, we'll figure out a way to, to na navigate through this and, and make a go of it. So I, that, that's the part that I think uh, I love about this place. I would say one of the biggest messages we'd like to leave people with, you have to support your local guy, your local business, your local producer, your local uh, dairy fella, pork, uh, you know, yep. chicken, eggs. Those are the people that look after you when things are really going tough. And then the tough gets going, that's when the people, I mean, the chickens keep on laying and, yeah. the, and the little piglets keep on getting born and the cows yeah. need to be milked. And yeah. that's what makes it awesome to be in rural. 
Yeah. Boundary. A absolutely. I think there's an underappreciation for, you know, the, the, the small businesses, those really like little enterprises. There's been some negative things that have come out around kind of uh, public shaming or, or social media shaming uh, for, for some of those businesses. And, and, you know, that's one of the messages that is really important to me is that, that's, that's so uh, dangerous and insidious in terms of just culture in the community. And the businesses that are still able to provide these services safely, it's really important now, probably more than ever, that we're supporting them. I, you know, I, I heard a stat or read a stat this morning that 50% that, uh, of, of small business in Canada is expecting that they might not make it past the end of May. I think it's it's another call for us to really appreciate and support, uh, however we can, when we can do so safely, those businesses that are still able to support our economy and keep open. So let's make sure we, we continue that support to those places. When you talk about the Chamber, I think one of the key messages that we wanted to leave um, the, the, the membership of the Chamber when we started this thing, and uh, people might not know, but the Cowboys are a member, and for my sins, I'm also on the board with the Boundary Country uh, Regional Chamber of Commerce. Long name, long name, Boundary Country Regional yes. Chamber of Commerce. But we wanted to support people. We don't want to do things for people, because if you learn a man to fish, you know, you will keep on yeah. getting some fish. And we found in the past that chambers tend to, tend to overstep that boundary a little where they try and do things for people, but it's for us to encourage people to do things for themselves. Yeah. I am perplexed about what comes next. What, what, is the, what is the thinking at the moment when you talk to the businesses and to the people in town? What, what are they saying? How is this going to change our life going forward? Well, I think everybody's at a point now where they want to at least talk about the phase-out plan. I think what we're going to get is a new stability as we move forward. I'm hoping restaurants will have an opportunity for, for partial openings. I'm not sure how they're going to do that, but they're talking now about some of those, those uh, legislated closures uh, being allowed uh, a, a safe opening. Barbers, hairdressers, restaurants, those things that are also hurting the economy. People are going to be really hungry by the time this is over. They're going to want to go out. They're going to want to travel. They're going to want to see things. So I'm not thinking this is going to curtail tourism forever. And we may found that the, the bounce back is going to be very invigorating for our community. All we can hope for is that this blows over quickly and that summer comes quickly and that folks actually come and visit us. Yes, I think that as we see things opening up again, you know, we're going to sparkle. This community is ready for action.